in the dusty sun baked plains of northern Nigeria, in a small village named Tudu, there lived a girl named Amina. Amina was only 12 years old, but her heart carried the weight of an adult. Her eyes, once bright with the curiosity of youth, now held a sadness that no child should ever know. She was the daughter of Alhaji Abubakar, a respected man in the village, known for his piety and adherence to the teachings of Islam. Amina's mother, Zainab, was a quiet woman who had been married off at a young age, just like her daughter would be. Amina was her parents' only child, a precious jewel they cherished. But in Tudu, the value of a girl was often measured by how she could be used to secure alliances or bring wealth to her family. And so, despite her tender age, Amina's fate had been already decided. One hot afternoon, as Amina helped her mother prepare lunch in, the, in their small mud brick home, her father returned from the mosque with a serious expression on his face. He sat down heavily on the woven mat, his eyes not meeting his wife's or daughter's. Amina, he called, his voice low and somber. Yes, Baba, Amina replied, hurrying to sit by his side. You are growing up, my daughter, he began, his eyes now fixed on her. It is time for you to fulfill your duty as a Muslim woman. You are to be married. Amina's heart skipped a bit. She had heard whispers among the village women about her marriage about leaving the home of your parents to live with a man who could be your husband. But she had never imagined it would happen to her so soon. She was only 12. She still played with her friends in the dusty streets, still helped her mother fetch water from the well, still dreamed of the small things that brought her joy. But Baba, I am not ready, she whispered, her voice trembling. Her father's face softened for a moment, but then his expression hardened again. This is not about what you are ready for, Amina. This is about what is best for our family and what is in accordance with Allah's will. Zainab, Zainab Amina's mother, sat silently her hands shaking as she twisted the edge of her hijab. She wanted to speak, to plead for her daughter, but she knew her place. In their home, in their culture, the word of the father was final. The man you will marry is al Musa, her father continued. He is a wealthy man, it is promised to take good care of you. Amina knew al Musa. He was a man of nearly 50, with a long white beard and a stern face. He was known in the village as a successful trader, a man who owned several businesses and was respected by many. But to Amina, he was just an old man, a stranger. Baba, please, Amina began to cry. I want to stay with you and Mama. I don't want to marry. Her father frowned, displeased with her tears. Amina, you must not question what has been decided. This is your duty and you will obey. And with that, the matter was settled. Amina was to be married to al Musa in two weeks. Now the preparation. The days leading up to the wedding were a blur for Amina. She was barely able to comprehend what was happening. Her mother Zainab dressed her in fine clothes, prepared her for the wedding night, and tried to comfort her in the only way she knew she could. My daughter, you must be strong, Zainab whispered one night as they lay together on a mat in a small room they shared. I was younger than you when I was married to your father. Is this our way? You will get used to it. 
but amina was not comforted she did not want to get used to it she wanted to remain a child to play to learn to grow up in her own time but she knew that was not her choice to make on the day of the wedding the village was filled with celebration the women sang and the men praised Allah for the union and the children ran around unaware of the gravity of the situation. Amina was dressed in a beautiful green hijab with gold embroidery. Her small hands adorned with henna. She looked like a doll but her eyes betrayed the fear that gripped her heart. Alhaji Musa arrived at the ceremony with a large entourage. He smiled as he saw his young bride, but his smile did not reach his eyes. To him, Amina was just another possession, another mark of his success. He had hardly been married three times, but the other wives had died or left him. Amina was to be his new wife, a first start. The ceremony was quick. The Imam recited the necessary prayers. The marriage contract was signed. And just like that, Amina was no longer a child but a wife. The women cheered the men, congratulated Alhaji Musa, and Amina's father looked on with pride, but Amina felt nothing but dread. That night, Amina was taken to her home, a large compound with high walls. Alhaji Musa had prepared a room for her. Decorated with fireworks and cushions, but to so Amina it felt like a prison. She sat on the bed trembling with fear and Ajimosa entered the room. He looked at her, a small fragile figure in the corner of the bed, and his expression softened slightly. Do not be afraid, Amina, he said, sitting beside her. I will take care of you. You are my wife now. But his words did not comfort her. The night was long and filled with fear and Amina cried silently into her pillow. She knew that her life had changed forever and there was nothing she could stop. The days that followed were lonely and difficult. Alaji Musa was often away on business, leaving Amina alone in a large house with only the servants for company. She missed her mother, her father and the simple life that she had once known. She felt trapped like a bird in a cage with no hope for escape. Her duties as a wife were confusing and frightening to her. She was expected to cook, clean and serve her husband. Tasks that were foreign to her. She was expected to share his bed, something that terrified her. She was expected to be a woman, but she was still a child. As the moments passed, Amina withdrew further into herself. She spoke little, her laughter disappeared, and her once bright eyes became dull. She would sit by the pillows, staring out at the world beyond the walls of the compound, longing for freedom, for a life she could never have. The village woman, village women gossiped about her. She is too quiet, they would say. A girl like her should be happy to be married to such a wealthy man. But they did not see the pain in her eyes, the fear that gripped her heart. They did not understand that she was still a child, forced into a life she did not want. Amina's only solace was in her prayers. She would kneel on her prayer mat, tears streaming down her face, and beg Allah for deliverance. Please, Allah, she would whisper, save me from this life. I am too young, I want to be free. But no deliverance came, her days continued in the same lonely pattern, each one blending into the next. Alhaji Musa treated her kindly, but he did not understand her. He saw her as his wife, not as a child in need of care and protection. One day, Amina fell ill. The sickness came on suddenly, a fever that burned through her small body. She lay in bed, delirious. Her mind drifting in and out of consciousness. Alhaji Musa called for a doctor, but there was little that could be done. The illness was not of the body but of the soul. 
Zainab came to see her daughter, her heart breaking at the sight of her once lively child, now so frail and weak. She held Amida's hand, tears falling from her eyes as she whispered, Forgive me, my daughter, I did not know. I did not know it would be like this. Amina looked at her mother, her eyes filled with pain. Mama, I am so tired, she whispered. I want to go home. But Zainab knew there was no going back. Amina was married now, bound to Alaji Musa by the laws of their faith and their culture. There was no escape. As the weeks passed, Amina slowly recovered from her illness but she was never the same. The light in her eyes were gone, replaced by a quiet resignation. She no longer cried, no longer prayed for deliverance. She accepted her fate, knowing that there was nothing she could change about it. Alhaji Musa noticed the change in her, but he did not understand it. He continued to provide for her, to treat her with kindness, but he could not reach her. She was there in body, but her spirit was broken. The village women continued to gossip, but now their tones were tinged with pity. Poor Amina, they will see. She was too young and innocent for this. <laughs>